This is a video about conformal maps, and we're in the context of a complex variables class, say. So let's start off with a definition of what that means. A function f from c to c is conformal if it preserves angles. Uh, let's try to say that in a little bit more detail. So that is, if you've got two paths, gamma 1 and gamma 2 in the complex plane, and if they have the same initial point a plus bi, and let's say the theta is the angle between gamma 1 and gamma 2 at a plus bi, then theta is also the angle between the image of those curves, f of gamma 1 and f of gamma 2, at the image of, f, at the image of a plus bi. So in other words, at f of a plus bi. Um, let's make sure that we all understand you know, what we mean here. And so to say that these curves have the same initial point a plus bi, I'm saying that a plus bi is gamma 1 of 0, which is the same thing as gamma 2 of 0. And you notice zero is important. That's the first point in my domain. Uh, if you look at the definition of gamma one and gamma two, maybe just in case too, if you're not familiar, what the heck's a path? A path in the complex plane, that's just a fancy name. I guess it's not too fancy. It's only four letters. Anyway, it's a name for a continuous function whose domain is just the real interval from zero to one and you get a complex number. Uh, one more thing I want to say, what's it mean to say theta is the angle between two paths? What we're referring to is that theta is going to be the angle between the two tangent vectors at gamma 1 prime of 0 and gamma 2 prime of 0. So those are two tangent vectors to the curve at your initial point. And I've got a little picture for you down here too. So I've got my green and my pink curves that have the same initial point, say a plus bi, that's white. And so to measure the angle between those two curves, what I would really refer to is the tangent vector uh, to both of those curves. So gamma 1 prime of 0 is in yellow, and gamma 2 prime of 0 is in orange. So theta is the angle between those two vectors. All right, so let's look at a concrete example as well. So over here on the left, think of this as the z-plane if you like. Um, I have got these two curves. Gamma 1 is part of a parabola, 1 plus t plus i times the quantity 1 plus t squared. And gamma 2 is part of a line whose equation, or whose parameterization if you like, is 1 plus t plus i times 1 minus t. And what I'm interested in doing is, you know, I measure that angle theta, say, and we'll, we'll figure out what theta is later. What we're going to do, though, is what if I took those complex numbers in the z-plane and I plugged them into an innocent-looking function like f of z equals z squared? So what if we squared all the complex numbers that we're looking at in that picture on the left in the z-plane? Well, typically, you know, we're in the context of complex uh, functions. The image, we usually talk about being in the w-plane. I'm not going to really proceed with using th those words a whole lot, but just to make sure that if you've seen some of this stuff in a complex book before, we're talking about the same thing that you probably read about. So here's what the image of gamma 1 and gamma 2 look like. And of course, what do you do? You should just square the formulas that were over on the left side. And what we want to compare, and what you probably believe in the picture, I want to compare the angles theta on the left with the angle phi on the right. And what I'm going to try to do is a bunch of algebra just to show you by hand that those two angles actually are going to be the same thing. And so how on earth would we do that? So how do theta and phi relate? So recall the dot product from vector algebra. For me, that was calc 3 whenever I learned the dot product. And so what's that again? If u and v are vectors and alpha is the angle between them, and u dot v one way to compute it is to take the length of u times the length of v times cosine of that angle between them. And what that allows me to do is to solve for cosine of the angle, and of course, of course I could use you know, arc cosine or cosine inverse, whichever one you'd like to say, in order to figure out what alpha actually is. So we're going to use that formula in a moment to figure out what uh, expressions for theta and phi actually are. So I've copied my pictures from above in uh, this part. What I've also done is I've, I've added a few things, right? To say that theta is the angle between these two curves, remember that's saying theta is the angle between the two tangent vectors to those two curves, gamma one prime of zero and gamma two prime of zero. And over on the right-hand side, we could say the same thing. So uh, theta should be, I'm sorry, phi should be the angle between the derivative, so ddt, of f of gamma 1 prime of 0 and the derivative, again with respect to t, of f of gamma 2 prime, uh, uh, sorry, f of gamma 2 of 0. Now you might be wondering too, like, can I just take f of gamma 1 prime and f of gamma 2 prime? And the answer is no. You're going to see why in a minute. 
And so, uh, again, hold that thought. If you're thinking that, why can't I just do that? You'll remember why in just a minute, but I'll, I'll make sure to emphasize it when we get there. Let's go ahead and I've got these four vectors to compute. So let's start computing them. So gamma one prime, I just look at its formula. I take the derivative with respect to t and I should get one plus two i there. And if you like, or what I would like to do is that complex number one plus two i, I wanna identify it with the ordered pair one comma two. Just helps me plot things a little bit easier. Same thing over here, if you look at the green curve and I say take the derivative of that formula with respect to t, you should just get a one minus i out of that. And I'm gonna identify that the, with the point one comma negative one. So again, all my three bars mean is say, just think of this as plotting the point one negative one in the plane, if that's easier for you. That's gonna be useful later on when I actually do my dot product formula and take lengths and stuff like that. Let's do the same thing over here, all right? And you were ready, right? So I gotta do that derivative, d dt of f of gamma one of zero. And so, oh, it should just be f prime of that, except you need the chain rule as well. And so that's why it's not as easy as just plugging gamma one prime into f and saying you're done. That's not the tangent vector. You need the chain rule. So uh, the, the tangent vector over here in the image is going to be the first one, f prime of gamma one of zero times gamma one prime of zero. And if I work that out, I could you know, look at the formula and try to work that out. You should get two times one plus i times one plus two i. And same thing over, oh sorry, we're gonna reduce that a little bit. Think of that as, or when you do the algebra, you should get minus two plus six i, and I'm gonna think of that later on as negative two comma six. Same thing over here, I need to figure out the tangent vector to my green curve in the image over here. So I use the chain rule to find that formula. And now I can actually figure out the derivative from the green formula and I can use gamma two prime of zero that we did on the left side. So I should get two times one plus i times one minus i. Same thing, when I simplify all that, when the dust settles, you should just get four. And we're gonna, we're gonna identify that with the point four comma zero. In other words, four plus zero i. Great, so we have coordinates now for you know, the four tangent vectors that we're interested in. And remember the next part of the game was to, let's check out their dot product. And just so that we're all okay, big picture here, we're just steadily moving towards trying to compute uh, what the angles are here. So we're, we're about to compute the dot product so that we could utilize this formula up here in green. So let's substitute all this good stuff into the dot product a few times. So when I take the dot product of the vectors that we had on the left, so one, two, and one, negative one, um, I could use this to get an expression for theta. And I think I actually just stop here. Minus one over root 10 is gonna be cosine of theta. Now let's do the dot product to the two tangent vectors we found in the image. And so that would look like this. And I'm gonna divide by their lengths. And of course that should give me cosine of phi. And I'm just gonna do some algebra here. So when I say the length of a vector, just in case it's a little bit mysterious below, remember you square the components. So for instance, in the yellow, that would be four plus 36, so 40, but you take the square root of that. So that's the length of a, of a complex number. Anyway, that is my number that I get for cosine of phi. And of course that's also simplifies to minus one over root 10. And now I take a look and I compare, and I see that I would get the same thing for theta as I would for phi. And so that's gonna justify for us that uh, these two maps, they sorry, this map f of z equals z e squared, preserved angles. Just showing you that it, that it does. So let's talk about what do we wanna notice here. So f of z is z squared, it's, it's a holomorphic function at the point one plus i. It's, it's a polynomial, so it's entire. If you know that word, that's fantastic. That means it's extra cool. And depending on what book you're using, maybe you use analytic instead of the word holomorphic, but we're talking about the same thing. And another thing that I want you to notice is that the derivative at this point I care about, the derivative at one plus i, I can compute it. It's two times one plus i. And the point is, that's not zero. So it, what this will give me is some criteria to determine when a complex value, fun a, a function of a complex variable, when it's gonna be conformal. And so here's our theorem, and we're gonna prove the theorem using the intuition that we gained from the example that we did and some of the things we noticed about the example. So the theorem is, if you've got a complex valued function, f from c to c, and if it's holomorphic at a plus bi, and if the derivative there is non-zero, 
then f is conformal at a plus bi. In other words, f will preserve angles uh, at that point. All right, so here's the proof, and it's gonna look kind of similar to some of the things that we were talking about above with the concrete example. So let's let gamma one and gamma two be two paths such that a plus bi is gamma one of zero, and that's the same thing as gamma two of zero. So they have the same initial point. These two paths have the same initial point a plus bi. Let's let theta be the angle between them. And remember that means that theta is the angle between the two tangent vectors, gamma one prime of zero and gamma two prime of zero. And what we need to do is we need to compute the corresponding tangent vectors to the transform curves or the, the, the image curves, if you like, f of gamma one and f of gamma two. And so notice when I take the derivative of f of gamma one at zero, I am going to get, well, certainly f prime of gamma one of zero, but by the chain rule times gamma one prime of zero. And uh, I'm just going to substitute in, oh, I remember gamma one of zero, that's my initial point, that's a plus bi. So I'm gonna keep that there. Let's do the same thing. Let's take the derivative of f of gamma two at zero. And of course, I'm gonna get well, f prime of gamma two at zero and by the chain rule times gamma two prime at zero. And now let's substitute in the blue again. The blue is a plus bi. And I wanna notice something. Wait a minute. That's the same number in front of both of these vectors. So let's think about what does this say? How do we obtain the tangent vectors at f of a plus bi? In other words, how do we obtain the tangent vectors over in the image? What just happened? What we just showed is that we're gonna dilate and rotate the tangent vectors at a plus bi by the exact same factor, f prime of a plus bi. So it's the same number that controls how you rotate and stretch or shrink you know, change the direction or whatever of your tangent vectors. But if you're moving both the vectors like the same amount, the angle between them should be the same. So that's the angle between gamma one zero and, and gamma two at zero. It's gonna be the same as the angle between f of gamma one of zero and f of gamma two at zero. So that shows that our map preserves angles, therefore it is conformal.